Welcome to the Livecast Construction Experience Podcast. I'm Kieran Brennan, co-founder of Livecast.com. Finally, the construction sector has entered its digital transformation, meaning the way we operate our projects and businesses day to day is being disrupted. This podcast is designed to help you in all areas of your business. We do this by bringing in experts across all key areas of a construction business who share their stories, their challenges, wins and losses so others can learn from their experiences. To watch previous episodes, please visit livecast.com or search livecast.com across all popular social platforms. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, welcome to another episode of the Livecast Construction Experience. This week, delighted to be joined by Chuck Schwartz. Chuck is a business development director and software and systems consultant for Markham LLP. Markham LLP is one of the largest independent public accounting and advisory service firms in the U.S., with offices in major business markets throughout the U.S., as well as selected international locations, including here in Dublin, Ireland. Markham were recently recognized as one of the top 50 accounting firms in the U.S. by the construction executive who listed Markham as number three. And Chuck Schwartz, it's very good to have you. Welcome to the Live Cost Construction Experience. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Kieran. Absolutely no problem at all. You're very welcome. Chuck, always good to get in and get a sort of an idea of the sort of person behind uh, the interview. And, you know, what was your relationship with the construction industry and where did all that begin? So it's, uh, wow, it's a, it's a great question. And it's a, kind of an interesting story. Uh, it began actually back in 1985 when I decided to forego college and um, make money instead, right away anyway. And uh, I took a job with a um, leading um, highway materials contractor in Long Island, New York, where I grew up. And um, that, that decision lasted about 15 years when I decided it was time to transition from the blue collar, if you will, side of construction to the white collar side. And uh, through a series of events, um, I was recruited by a CPA firm, um, not Markham, but a competitor of Markham in the New York area. And I took over their IT consulting practice, um, serving construction contractors. So I kind of, you know, major swing, if you will, from what I had done previously to what I was doing then. And then um, fast forward over time and years, and uh, I also uh, did some years as the owner of a construction software company uh, based in the Austin, Texas area in the US. And that's where I met and embraced Markham and became very familiar and friendly with Joe Natarelli, Joe who runs Markham's national construction practice and uh, decided to bring myself to Markham and work with Joe directly. Interesting. So you've been around the construction software and technology play as a whole for, for a long time. Um, the company, that was uh, um, Acubil, was it the one, the one that you went in? and? and... It, it was Acubil. And, and what's interesting there too, Kieran, is back in the 80s when I started in construction, I actually helped find and implement our first computer system. When I joined in 85, it was completely manual. Everything done with paper and calculators. Mm. And back then, it was prior to the PC, we actually brought in a, uh, a big IBM based platform with those gigantic green screens, if you remember, and um, big, big fat black cables all over the office, pre, you know, pre internet, it, you know, a, a big difference from what goes on today. Um, but then fast forward, yes, to AccuBuild, an integrated system for construction management and accounting and all the disciplines of, uh, of construction. Well, I mean, I suppose that would have been your getting out talking to construction companies and construction company owners and operators about their problems. And I mean, I suppose, what did AccuBuild do to solve the problems for a construction company at that time? Well, one of the things they did um, and, and, and identified as really a weakness in construction software was answering the need of the back office and how it's dependent on what goes on in the field, right? Because the money is made and lost in the field, the money is counted in the back office, mm -hmm. right? So it was, it, was, it was really the union of those two ideas and disciplines, if you will, 
that they, um, you know, that they were trying to, uh, that really address for their clients. Yeah, I mean, you, you would have engaged a lot of construction companies and professionals, I suppose, and it would have been at a high level as well. How did they receive and react to the idea of new technology? Because I still get resistance today, even with the idea of new technology, and I can only imagine what it could have been like um, before my time. Well, as, as you probably are aware, construction, you know, sorely lags behind many other industries in adopting technology and using technology, um, you know, many contractors and owners of contractors, you know, were, were guys that swung a hammer and, yeah. and, and, and did things with their hands. So the idea of using technology and certainly even today's technology, which is so phone driven and app driven. And, um, you know, so, so people that use their hands and now may use their hands differently. It's just been very slow to adopt. However, um, we, we are definitely seeing a change um, in, in recognizing that things can be done better, things can be done differently, and technology is available, again, to help a contractor recognize you know, what's happening in the field and actually bringing that information into the business. Because at the end of the day, the answer, well, the, the question rather is, am I making money? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Hence our, our, our branding. Um, yeah, we, we fully, fully believe with that. It's, it's so interesting that when you talk about implementing technology, no one really cares. But when you're talking about fixing the problem, suddenly they do start to care. And then the problem is, am I making money? Well, yeah, you know, this, this will fix that problem. Or is my safety standards up, up to scratch? This could self solve that problem. So when you talk problem solution versus technology, sometimes you start to see the adoptions um, being a, Coming on a bit quicker, I suppose, is the best way to put it. Um, so it, is that what you, you, you believe? It's because we, you know, we come from a sort of work with our hands industry and technology just isn't natural. Um, do you see it? I mean, what's, what's, what's changing? It is starting to pick up now. What, what do you think has changed? Well, it, you know, it's really interesting because uh, one of the things I immediately thought of when you were talking just now is, you know, for years, I think one of the challenges for construction contractors was not so much about having money, but, but were they making money, right? Um, you know, and that's where the accounting comes into it and the systems that assist in all of that, because having money and making money are two very different things, right? You, you could have money in your company's bank account but if you have committed costs out there, as you well know, um, you don't have that money. That money's committed already, mm-hmm. right? So, um, and you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen contractors spend the money that they had, not realizing that it was already committed somewhere else. Yeah. So, and I, and I think that you know, through better advice. And, and advice like Markham can bring to the table through our expert construction accounting practice and, and through technology with, with real visibility for contractors to, you know, am I making money? That's, that's, that's where the big shift is, I believe. Yeah, one, one of my biggest learnings from running my own company at, at the time was around like, we done okay, but we done okay because we looked at a bank account and the bank account said we done, done okay. But when you've got like, your material suppliers, 30 day credit, you're not getting paid from clients maybe for 60, 90 days, and you've got no experience around how to manage that cash flow or no systems to manage that cash flow. You're, I think you're heading towards a cliff at some stage because at some point in time, you're going to have run into a problem on a project and at one time, point in time, something's not going to go to plan, you didn't get the bid, the estimate quite right, and you're going to run into trouble without a system, without a system that is, of course. Um, from your time then with AccuBuild, like what was one big takeaway you can, you, was there a, a big learning that you could say you took away from that experience? A- absolutely. The, you know, the, the, probably the biggest learning was actually when I met the folks at Markham and I changed from simply selling software to integrating principles of construction accounting into my into my sales process, if you will, um, because it was it was when that happened, 
that I started educating my customers versus just selling them systems, right? And I was able to bring the conversation that we're having right now about helping them make money versus, you know, j- just being in business, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. So yeah. I, think, I think that was maybe one of the biggest takeaways. The, the other that I will say was, and it goes back to something we were talking about before, was really the union of information that is generally um, used and managed out in the field and very often done manually. And because it's not integrated, if you will, or it's not you know, joined to the back office and very often brought late to the table um, and how that can hurt a business, that was another big learning uh, piece that I took away from there. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've touched on Markham there uh, a couple of times. I mean, you're now working obviously with Markham, one of the top three construction accounts firms in the US, which is uh, pretty impressive. I mean, what's, what's, what's your day-to-day role in Markham? What does that look like? So two, two hats, really. One is educating non-Markham c- contractors, not non-clients, um, and, and helping them understand um, the, the role that Markham can play. So what really makes Markham unique and why we are in, in the top 50, and as you said, number three, is, and I do believe we, we are truly the surgeons, if you will, in the construction accounting um, industry for contractors. And um, by, by surgeons, what I mean by that is, you know, if, if you have a significant health problem, you go to a specialist. Well, we are the specialist when it comes to that. So being able to educate um, potential clients around that and, and, and bring them to Markham and then to see what we do for them, it, it, it really is something special. The other hat is, and this is you know, very much what we're talking about here today, is I bring my construction software experience to Markham as well. And I help our contractor clients that are either struggling to use the systems that they're using currently, one, two, identify better systems and options for them. And then three, it's, again, it goes back to that um, bringing the information that's going on outside the back office into the back office and making sure that those two sides of the business are speaking to each other and doing it well. Yeah. An interesting role, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure you get to see a lot of what companies do well and then obviously what a lot of other companies don't do so well. I mean, I'd imagine through sort of the last you know, six months or so, since we've hit this COVID problem that, I mean, I mean, going out and selling probably wasn't top of the agenda. What was the Markham approach to helping construction companies through COVID? That, that, that's a great question. And, and, I'm, and I remember more or less the day after, if you will, that we all, that life changed and, you know, everybody was working from home. And uh, I remember talking to Joan Adarelli and, you know, kind of having that, what are we going to do next kind of question? Um, because you were right. People weren't interested in talking about anything new. They were more interested in how am I going to stay in business? Um, and, and we took the attitude of thought leadership and taking the knowledge that Markham had in general around construction and construction accounting, but also what was going to be coming down the pike, so to speak. Um, folks that were um, entering into this payroll protection program and, and other loans and opportunities that were very specific to COVID-19 and, and, and how that would affect them, how to, how, to, how to make sure that these things did not become events that could hurt them and taxable events. And what I did is I reached out to a bunch of the uh, folks that, uh, and colleagues that I worked with around the software industry and other service providers to the construction industry. And my message to them was, you know, guys and and gals, let's not sell for a while. Let's just tell the audience out there that we're here and we care. And we, we should be bringing the message about keeping the lights on and staying in business and how best to do this now. And, 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 and Markham essentially joined forces with some of the largest service providers to the construction industry and brought that message to them and brought it out in a very big way. And, uh, and I think it's really what set us apart 
from others in our space. And, uh, and I think others would tell you that. Yeah, no, it's interesting. And it, was that delivered through webinars and stuff? Yes, uh, amazing, right? The, as we're doing it today, yeah. right? Across the Atlantic Ocean, everything's, everything's turned virtual, right? So, uh, I, yeah, I haven't, I haven't really left the house or the, uh, or the home office in about six months, um, but, but essentially haven't missed a beat. But yes, it was all delivered through webinars. Yeah, I love that. I love that because, I mean, it's, we, we took a similar approach here ourselves and that was, you know, April, May. <clears throat> like, who wants a new cost control system for a project that, that's not open? Um, so we sort of took a similar approach where we said, let's just try and get out as much helpful content as we can. So let's do what we're doing today here. Let's bring people on that know more about certain situations than we do. Let's interview them. Let's get the word out there. Let's do webinars on stuff that maybe we don't do. Like, you know, anything we can find helpful, let's just push it out and hopefully it helps. And it, it, it did, it did. And, you know, the, the reason we've pushed the podcast out to, to one a week now is because the feedback was actually good and people are saying to us, you know, that was helpful, that really helped me get through a certain situation or put me on the right track to, to solving a situation. You've touched on something there as well. Different sides of the Atlantic, sitting here having a conversation about construction. <laughs> like, if someone had said this was a couple of years ago that we're going to be having construction conversations with different people around the world, we would have said we're crazy. What's your opinion on the shift in mindset in construction to technology in a post-COVID world when we get there, I suppose? Well, I, I think um, pro- probably the best way I can answer that is to think of just our customers, Markham's customers alone, those that were prepared for an event like that, right? Had systems in place, had cloud-based systems so people could easily work from home and, and make that shift, if you will, and then the other half that weren't, right? And um, it bodes, you know, that conversation bodes well for a system like yours, which is purely cloud-based and, um, it, you know, and, and technology that is usable in an environment like this, right? The, the folks that, you know, were able to make that shift happen quickly, easily, um, easy on staff, easy on their customers, easy on everybody, right? Those, those are the ones that got through it and are getting through it in a little less stressful way. Mm, yeah, I mean, you've probably se- you've seen a lot of systems go, go into construction companies. What would be one tip that you could have for a construction company looking to implement new software? First and foremost, it must be cloud-based. First and foremost, you know, the, the story I tell contractors is actually pretty simple. I say, you build things, you build things very, very well. Stick to what you do best, right? Let the, let the software company, let the technology company manage and handle the technology and the software, right? Systems should be in the cloud. To, we, we proved we can all work from home. We proved that this gigantic global network actually works right so now it's time to use it if the, the technology is there and and again le- leave the technology to the folks that you know run and manage that technology and you stick to building things yeah couldn't agree more with that one uh, you also wrote a book i think it was 2017 chuck's lemonade a recipe for inspired thinking and living what was the idea behind that so uh it, it, it's interesting that you bring that up. So um, as life would have it, I've been through a lot in life, right? I'm, I'm 56 years old. I've, uh, I was married the first time, very, very young. Um, as I said before, took, took, took uh, my first job before I went to college and then went to college after I became an adult and after I had three children. So, you know, didn't exactly go through... Um, <laughs> as you would say, you know, life as might be considered normal. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, you know, in my 40s um, and recognizing that, you know, things didn't go exactly as I planned or as I wished, I started to do a lot of writing and journaling. Uh, this turned into a blog. My, uh, I started posting my blog out on Facebook and, and friends started commenting on it. It started to grow you know, it grew to a few hundred followers and I was posting every day and people were really getting inspired by the message 
and the message was, uh, you know, in general, life doesn't always go as you planned or as you wished. It's what you do next that matters most, right? And, and, and rather than taking a woe is me approach to life, I took the approach of, you know, look, find your gifts in all your negative situations and go make lemonade out of your lemons. And, um, and that about uh, eight months or so ago, I realized I had about 17 to 1800 pages of content. And I decided to take that blog, if you will, and my content and turn it into um, what has turned into a, a lovely book and is getting, uh, it's getting a lot of accolades. So yeah, thank you excellent. for bringing that up. Oh, excellent. I'm well done on it. Um, I had a guy on, on a couple of weeks ago, a guy by the name of Brett Campbell, based on the Sunshine Coast down in Australia. Um, Brett is a cabinet maker turned global marketer and really successful in what he does. And Brett also wrote a book. And he said to me at the time that he recommends, whether it's published or not, everybody writes a book because it gives you that time to reflect and think and journal, as you say. What was your big takeaway from writing a book? So that's a great question. Uh, the, one of the biggest things that have come out of this is the realization of, um, I'll, I'll, I'll use the word legacy. Um, the, the, thought that, the thought that this will live beyond me, that my words will live beyond me. I mean, one, one day I'm not going to be here any longer, but the book will still be here. Another fabulous takeaway, and this goes back to the whole COVID-19 situation, was not long ago I joined a writer's club, as I am now, quote unquote, an author. And uh, I joined a writer's club, and I got notified through the writer's club that um, a publication on the East Coast of the US, the editor of this publication wanted to document COVID-19, to give it its place in history. Again, someday we're not gonna be here any longer. And a mm hundred -hmm. years from now, people may hear this term COVID-19 and wonder, just like, just like the words World War I, right? We weren't here. We didn't know anything about that. So anyway, um, they were asking for people that did any kind of writing around COVID to share that. And um, this, this individual, this editor is gonna actually collect all these articles and, and create a book that they're gonna share with public libraries, uh, town halls, and also make for sale. So I had written a few COVID related daily inspirational blog posts to encourage people, you know, again, life doesn't always go as as you planned or as you wished. And it's what you do next that matters most and stay positive. We're gonna get through this. And um, my wife and I talked about it and we picked two of my blog posts um, as, as entries. And actually then I checked my ego at the door and I went with the one that my wife uh, suggested. And the great news is I have been accepted. I'm going to be in this book. So now talk about legacy and, uh, and my words living on. So, yeah. And the biggest lesson is you should have just listened to your wife from the start. <laughs> <laughs> she was always going to win that battle, Chuck. That was, that was yeah. always going to happen. Um, Chuck, you've been very kind to us with your time. I suppose, where, where can people learn more about the book, I suppose, and Markham and yourself? Well, uh, great. So clearly for me and Markham, you can learn about me on LinkedIn. Just, you know, search my name, Chuck Schwartz. Markham, our website is Markham LLP. So that's M A R C U M L L P dot com. Again, Joe Natarelli leads and runs our national construction practice. And you can search Joe on LinkedIn as well. Uh, for the book, uh, as, as you would imagine, it is available on Amazon. It's also available on Barnes and Noble. But you can also get it from my website, which is chuckslemonade.com. And you can also sign up for my daily blog by going to chuckslemonade.com and filling out the form. And I'll send you a daily inspirational message. Super. We really appreciate that. We link it up as well in the show notes as well. Chuck, thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to be here and talking with you.